All right, so here we are, it's 1230. It looks like we've got a few people coming on here. I don't know if this time's gonna work for folks, uh, but I am gonna record what we're doing. Uh, this is gonna be recording uh, onto our Canvas site, just so you know. Um, what I wanted to do today was first of all, say hello, it's good to see you all. I'm glad that you're all uh, made it to week three, almost week four of the class, so that's halfway through. Uh, this is a pretty challenging uh, schedule. Uh, trying to, I was looking at where we're supposed to be here in week three, week four, and usually that's where we are uh, in a 16 week semester in week eight, and you have a lot more time to digest what you're looking at. So, um, so you should feel like superheroes. It's a lot of material that you've been going through over just a couple weeks. So, um, so you should be pretty happy about that. My plan today, uh, the real reason I wanted to get together and talk to everybody is to uh, talk about the Chi Tester exam that's coming up next week. It's going to open next week and it's open for several days uh, and give you the format for that and talk about how that's going to work and then just open it up to see if there are any questions and really just check and see how everybody's doing. So if you're all right with that, um, we'll go ahead and start with that. Um, I had you when you joined the conversation here today. It started with you being muted. If, you, if you'd like to uh, ask a question or say anything, feel free to unmute your microphone or unmute your video. Um, you're certainly welcome to do that. So let me go ahead and start with uh, just an introduction about the exam and then we'll get on to any questions you might have. Um, so I'm going to share my screen here, which is showing um, what you should see uh, when you log in uh, to Canvas and take a look at the exam. Um, so the first exam is going to cover uh, chapters um, through chapter 14. Uh, all of the uh, activities you've done, all of the reading quizzes you've done um, through those chapters. It's going to be in Chi Tester. So if you haven't used Chi Tester before, it's the same program uh, that they use in all the testing centers. The only difference is we're going to be using it uh, at home. You don't need to go to a testing center to complete this exam. This is an unproctored exam that will be taken at your house uh, or anywhere else you have access to a computer. Um, the way this exam works is there's a question bank of about a thousand questions and the computer will randomly choose 50 of those uh, and uh, that will be consists that'll be your exam. Uh, the exam is open book and open note. Um, so you can look at any of your notes, any of your book materials, um, anything we've seen on Canvas, any of the videos, anything you want to do that. Um, you take the test uh, 50 minutes, uh, or sorry, 50 questions, and there's no time limit. Uh, once you're done with that, you can take the test as many times as you like. So if you'd like to take it, um, take it again, you just go ahead and restart it. You'll get a new 50 questions, so it won't be the same exam, um, but they'll be pulled from the same materials and, and, uh, and you'll, see, uh, you'll see different questions on the same material. Uh, and you can take that exam for as long as you like up until when it closes. And the, I believe it's opening on the 13th and closing on the 16th. Um, like I said, you can take the exam from wherever you like. Um, you don't have to go to a testing center to do that. And then I will record the last score. So if you take the exam uh, four times, I'll record the fourth score uh, on that. Um, so that's the way these exams work. And, and my basic philosophy about these exams is um, they're, they're an opportunity for you to kind of review what you've been learning and really uh, kind of see it all at once and synthesize it. Um, I think that, uh, frankly, I think they, they should be fun to do and it should be interesting to do. So, um, so that's, uh, uh, that's the format of the exam. So at this point, I probably would just open it up to um, any questions you might have about uh, material that's, uh, that you've been working on or any of the activities or any of the reading quizzes. Uh, and I can talk about uh, some of that material, um, any, anything you'd like. Let's see, I've got a question in here. Yeah, so it says here in the chat, you'll take the very last score, not the highest score. That is correct, yeah. So if you take, um, so if you take the exam five times, um, I will take the last score. So this is just, um, I mean, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, if you, if you get a, a, a score you're happy with on the last one and you want to try it again and then you get a worse score, that's the one I'm going to take. So you, you want to be a little bit careful. I suspect what's going to happen is every time you take the test, you'll do better. At least that's what I've seen. Um, I've never really had any students having a problem with that. Um, any other questions from the folks that are here?
Yeah, go for it, Jordan. I see his hand up. Yeah, so one that I had was, I've noticed in our books, the conceptual physics, and on our quizzes, we haven't really been required to do much as regarding calculations as far as how to go through and solve all these. Right. On the exam, are we going to be asked to go through and calculate different problems, or is it more just understanding the concepts behind them and how they work? No, it's going to be conceptual. I mean, there may be questions where it asks you um, kind of order of magnitude. It might say, like, you know, if you if you double the velocity of the object, what happens to it? But you're not going to have to do any, any you know, detailed calculations. Okay. Yeah, they should look very similar to your reading quizzes. Um, so I think I think you shouldn't. You sh nothing should take you too by surprise. Cool. And again, this the purpose of these exams is not is, is really just to give you an opportunity to kind of synthesize, go back to the beginning, and um, and see everything we've covered. The thing I always loved about physics is that everything builds on everything else. So, um, so I think you'll you'll find that that's true. All right, other questions. So if folks don't have questions, I do have uh, some strategies um, for how you might want to do this. Um, I would definitely set aside time to take the test. My, my guess is that it'd probably take you an hour to go through it once, probably less. Um, but if you give yourself an hour to take it, uh, it opens on the 13th, go ahead and take it and see how you do. And if you uh, do well, maybe you won't have to take it again and you'll be happy with that. And if you don't, give yourself a day uh, and take it again. So don't, don't try to take them. I think if you take it over and over and over again in a row, you'll just wear yourself out. So I'd recommend just taking it uh, just right at the beginning um, on the first day it's open and see how you do. You can always do better when you take it the second or third time. Um, I found in the past that uh, when I look at the data from, the, from these exams, most people take the exam at most twice maybe three times. Uh, there's a lot of people who take it just once and they do just fine and they're happy with that. Um, I definitely see that uh, the people who decide to take it more than once do better on the subsequent attempts. Uh, so I think you'll, uh, I think you'll figure out the best, best strategy uh, for you to do that. Um, but yeah, that's my, that's my introduction to this. If there are no uh, questions about specific concepts, um, that's all I really had planned today was to just give you the review of what uh, what the format is. So I see Jordan's got his hand raised. Go ahead, Jordan. Yeah, so there was one conceptual question that I had that I was wondering if you could just expound on a little bit. Sure. So absolutely. I was reading, and I think it was the chapter 11 when it talks about the properties of matter. Mm -hmm. And it brought up, so I, I'm in chemistry, so I'm familiar with the new, you know, the proton structure and I saw that it was talking about like a nucleon and a couple mm -hmm. of those other terms that were used and I think it was quarks. Can you just mm -hmm. explain kind of what those are a little bit? I feel like it didn't cover it super sure. clearly. Yeah, so you're, I, I think everyone is familiar with from, uh, you know, from kind of basic science classes in high school is that you have uh, all of the matter in the universe is made up of, of the same material in different configurations. So the, you know, if you have a hydrogen atom, it has one proton and one electron. If you have a helium atom, it has two protons and two electrons. And those are the things that chemically distinguish the, all the different uh, elements from everything else. Uh, those electrons are little, uh, little negatively charged particles that are in orbit around the protons, which are much, much larger positively charged uh, particles. And those protons and the neutrons that are next to them are inside what's called the nucleon. So the nucleus of the, of the, the element, right, contains protons and neutrons, and each one of those would be called a nucleon uh, because they're inside the nucleus. Uh, now so the whole, oh, kind of the whole thing is the nucleon? The protons, the, neutrons, so the nucleus neutrons. is all the protons and neutrons, and then you, a proton is a nucleon and a neutron is a nucleon, but they're different types of nucleons. Okay. Now the protons and neutrons are made up of even smaller particles called quarks. And quarks are not, you don't find those free floating around in nature. They, 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 they go to form our nucleons that make up our atoms. Um, but when we smash protons together at extremely high speeds, um, we see that they break up into these other subatomic particles. 
Uh, and of course you might ask yourself, well, what are quarks made of? <laughs> and the answer right now is we don't really know. I mean, uh, the, if you remember back to the whole idea of the atom, you know, the Greeks had this idea of the atom, which meant that the atom was indivisible. Um, that's, you know, the atomized material uh, meant that the, uh, that you break something down small enough and you just get the, you know, the most fundamental particle of that stuff. And it turns out that our atoms are not indivisible. They're broken up into electrons, protons, and neutrons. And it turns out the protons and neutrons aren't in, are, are not indivisible. They can be broken up into quarks. And it remains to be seen whether or not quarks can get broken up into smaller things. We don't have the particle accelerators necessary to smash them into each other hard enough uh, to see what they're made out of. So at the moment, they represent what we would call the fundamental particles. Um, and it's an open question uh, if there's anything deeper than that. Okay, so just to clarify, so you have your protons and your neutrons would both be considered nucleons. Correct. And then those can be broken up into what are called quarks, which Correct. we don't really know what they are. Right, right. Okay, cool. That makes more sense. Thank yeah. you. And the thing, I think the thing that I learned most about physics when I first started studying it is how much... Uh, even if we don't know what something is, as long as we know how it interacts with other things, then we can say a lot about it, right? So we don't, we don't really know what gravity is, right? I mean, it's a force that's, that, that causes attraction of massive objects. And uh, part of the thing about physics right now is trying to really get a deeper understanding of what gravity is. But once I've written down the mathematical description of how gravity works, then I know how all the masses move in the universe. Um, so physics is an evolving discipline where we're constantly learning more and more stuff. Uh, and at the moment, I would say we've got a pretty good handle on a huge fraction of the stuff in the universe, but there are things we just don't know yet. All right, other questions. Let's see if we've got, uh, I don't see any more questions in the chat. Anybody else have any, any questions they want to bring up? Okay, so that means that, um, let me just check the dates on here real quick. Yes, the, the due date on Canvas for the exam says July 16th, but it is going to open on the 13th, and you should be getting an email from, Can from Kai Tester about that uh, on the 12th. So you'll be able to take the exam as early as the, um, as the 13th uh, through the 16th. And just to recap again, um, 50 questions we pulled from the test bank. Open book, open note. You can take the exam as often as you like. You can take it from anywhere and I'm recording the last score. Okay, so uh, if you missed any of that, I did record uh, the last 15 minutes or so and I'll be putting that up on our website. 